Greetings, boys and girls. It looks like we are on to lesson nine for module four. This is what you guys are going to be working on today. Our goal is to determine how many degrees are in a circle using different pattern blocks. We know that a circle contains how many degrees? If you said 360, you are correct. What we're going to do today is we're going to use different pattern blocks, which you see listed here on this side, to determine how many pattern blocks it takes to create that 360 degrees. So let's go ahead and get started. It has here a square, and it wants to know the total number that fit around one vertex. We know a vertex is a point. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to actually use the back of this to show you how this is demonstrated. So <clears throat> if I take one square, a vertex is where points come together. So it could be here, or here, or here, or here. As soon as I add another square, I now have only two choices of a vertex, because it's where two points come together, here or here. Once I add my third square, my vertex is definitely right here. It's where all of these are coming together. It's like a Venn diagram. You know how all the points cross at one spot? Here's where it's crossing. So how many squares do you think it's going to take to complete this vertex? You said four? Let's see if you're right. You see how we have a vertex right here? That's our point. How many squares did it take? It took four. So if I drew a little circle here, that would be 360 degrees. So it took four squares. So what we would write on here is we would write four. But because this represents 360 degrees, it's 360 divided by four. What it's really looking for is what is the angle of each of these little squares? Well, I'm not sure if you can see it, but I can see it looks like a right angle where my two lines come together. So if these are right angles, that means this is worth what? 90, 90, 90, 90. And that is indeed what 360 divided by four is. And if you're not sure, you could actually work it out. Three does not go into four groups ever. So I'm looking at 36, which is nine. Nine times four is 36. Subtract a zero, bring down the zero. Zero goes into four zero times, 90. So essentially what I'm doing is I'm adding a 90 degree angle plus a 90 degree angle plus a 90 degree angle plus a 90 degree angle. So I would do that here. 90 degrees, four times. Since I'm using the same shape, it's gonna be the same set of degrees. And you're gonna do that for the whole set. I'll do it, and then you should pause before I get my answer to see if you can get the same answer. Good luck. The next thing we're looking at is triangles. So again, I'm going to flip my paper over. Right? This time, I'm actually going to give myself a vertex to work with. I want to work around that vertex. So that means I'm going to take my triangles and I'm going to mash them up to that point. All the way around that point. For you, this looks like I'm off. But if I look straight down, I can see that point. Let me actually hold the straight down. See how it's right at the point? All right, I want you to keep going and see what you end up as far as triangles go. How many triangles will be around that point? If you ended up with six, you are correct. The front of your paper should look like this. It took me six triangles to get around that one vertex. 360 divided by 6, you can work it off to the side if you need to. 3 does not go into 6 groups equally, but 36 does. So I put a little x there. <coughs> 6 times 6 is 36. 
subtract, I get 0. Bring down my 0. 0 into 6 groups 0 times. So each triangle's angle is worth 60 degrees, which makes sense because a triangle is actually 180 degrees. This equilateral triangle has 60, 60, 60. So, so I would do 60 degrees plus, and we know it took six of them, so how many 60s will I have? I will have six. One, two, three, four, five, six equals 360 degrees. All right, now you're going to do it with the hexagon. Here's your hexagon shape. Same point, and you're going to work your hexagons right around that point. See how many it takes. If you got three around that one vertex, you can't see it, but if I pull this away, see my vertex? I have three angles. One, two, three. And if you look at this angle, this angle is greater than a 90 degree angle. That should help you. And this is what you should have ended with. Three hexagons, 360 degrees, because that's all the way around that circle point, that vertex. Right here is that circle vertex, 360 degrees, divided by three hexagons. It means each one's 120 degrees. Is that obtuse? Yep. And I added each one up to equal 360. All right, now this one says acute angle. So if we look at this beautiful rhombus, here, this angle right here, that's obtuse. That's not the one we're measuring. We're measuring this teeny tiny acute one. So what you're going to do is you're going to be putting them in this way. All right, see how many fit around that vertex. You should have had six, because here's my point that all the points meet. My point in the middle. Each of these little acute angles make up 360 degrees. So since it's acute, ask yourself, how many degrees could it be? Yep, less than 90, good. Now go ahead and complete D. And here's what you have. 360 degrees divided by my six acute angles, it's this side right here, equals 60 degrees, just like our triangle did. Now we're going to use the same rhombus, but this time we're going to use our obtuse angle, the obtuse angle, which is this bigger one. Do you think it will take more obtuse angles or less around our vertex? See my obtuse angle? Give it a whirl, and then fill out the front. If you guessed less obtuse, you are correct, because obtuse angles are larger than acute angles. Now check your front. And here's what your front should look like. Last thing we're going to do is we're going to use this shape. This is the skinny brown one. And we want the acute angle, which is this one. I want you to do that one on your own. Let's see how far you get. This is what you should have ended up having. That's a lot of acute angles. We have one vertex in the middle, and it is not perfect. I will not lie to you. It's very difficult to get it perfect. But you can see that all of these fit nicely together. Everything is touching. That vertex, which is my circle, circle angle, is 360 degrees. And I have 12 of them. Check your front to see how you did. Here's what you should have ended up with, with our acute angle. 360 divided by 12. I asked myself, 36 tens divided by 12. 12 goes into 36 three times, so it would be three tens. That's what we've learned how to divide like that. All right, go ahead and flip your page. On this side, we're actually going to be measuring angles using pattern blocks. 
But I also want you to double check your measurement with a protractor. So you are going to need your protractor. So here we define the measurement of this angle. Well, first off, remember our first step is to determine whether it's acute, obtuse, right, or straight. Well, we can already see that maybe it is obtuse, correct. Go ahead and write that down so you don't lose it. Then from our front side, we know that a rectangle, or not a rectangle, a square is 90 degrees. And if you don't remember that, you can flip back and see that a square is 90 degrees because there were four of them. And a triangle, a triangle was 60 degrees. We can go double check that, 60 degrees. So if I add 90 and 60 together, I get 150 degrees. And my addition sentence would be 90 degrees, whoops, not a plus sign, plus 60 degrees equals 150 degrees. But then please double check with your protractor. Remember, our perpendicular lines, find the vertex of where those two connect. With the vertex, this one actually has a label, it's B. So connect vertex to vertex. Make sure one of your straight lines is on the zero and I can see it following along. I could extend it, which definitely makes it clearer. Woo, that one got a little excited. Again, connecting the vertex to the vertex. Straight line. See how the line comes all the way out to my zero. And then, oh, should have extended the other line. Let's extend. Remember, keep that protractor straight and hard so it doesn't turn. Ah, perfect. Look at what number it lands on. 30 or 150. Well, since it's obtuse, ob, obese, bigger than 90, must be 150, just like we did here. All right, go ahead and find a partner to finish this project with, or this piece with. Down here, you're going to use two or more pattern blocks to figure out the measurement of this angle. Use your pattern blocks, but also use your protractor. Have fun.